Hi, I'm Jennifer with True North Leatherworks, and today I am here to show you how to take my quiver kit and turn it into one of these quivers. I have two styles of stitching that I will show you how to do, the straight stitch and then a cross stitch over the edges. If you're unsure of which stitch is right for you, I will say that the straight stitch is quicker and easier to do. The uh, cross stitch is a little bit more complicated. You gotta pay attention to things a little bit more closely and it will take longer, but it does look pretty cool when it's done. So just things to keep in mind as you're deciding which one you want to do. So I am going to show you how to do this straight stitch. It's a pretty easy stitch. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it on our quiver, the quick and easy way. So when you open up your bag, you have thread, a needle, the little washi tape is just there so you can easily find it and not lose it. And then you're going to have your leather. Okay, so you're going to have two pieces of leather that have been riveted to your main piece. And then you're going to have a Conway buckle. I'll talk more about that. Um, already buckled on, but we're going to take this off because it's actually just going to be a, getting in the way while we're stitching it. So as you look at your leather, you may see some white stuff on the straps and maybe even on the body of the, the quiver right around where the strap is located. So you can see some white stuff here. Um, that is called bloom and that is uh, just the oils in the leather um, coming up to the surface. And so when leather is tanned, um, depending on the, the way it is tanned, there's different chemicals and oils that are used. And if you leave the leather just sitting around and you're not using it, then that bloom, that oil, some of the oils that are used in the leather might start seeping up to the top. If you're using the leather a lot, then you usually don't notice it um, just because the natural use patterns keep those oils uh, from having the opportunity to just sit and turn white. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking a, a piece of an old towel, an old t-shirt would work as well, and I'm just giving it a little bit of a rub um, just to wipe it off. Needs a little bit of friction as well, I think, to uh, get all that bloom off. You can see there's a little bit on the back as well. The back, it doesn't rub off quite as easily, but as I'm rubbing over it, you'll be able to see that there's less here as well. So um, when I put these kits together, I did make sure to wipe off all the bloom on the straps. Um, I just left a couple straps with the bloom on them specifically to show you in this video because I knew that that was something I wanted to talk about. Um, so your straps probably won't have any bloom showing on them, but if the the kit has been sitting around for a little while before you got around to making it, or if you made the quiver and then didn't use it for a while and it was just sitting around, you might notice some of that bloom coming to the surface again. Um, and if that's the case, just wipe it down again. Um, it just rubs off. Okay, so now that we've got the bloom taken care of, we've got our lighter that we'll use at the end. Make sure you use appropriate adult supervision. We also have some little scissors for snipping our thread. Okay, I'm going to turn this. As you look at the bottom, so as we, we're going to be folding it lengthwise, this is the top with the long strap coming out of it. And then this is the bottom where the short strap is attached. And 
if you look, you can see that between these two stitches in the middle, stitch holes, I guess they're not actually stitches yet, you'll see a larger gap than what's between the other stitches. And that is how you know that that's the middle. That's where we're going to be folding it. So we took the washi tape off the needle, and then I'm going to uh, undo my thread carefully. You don't want to knot it up. This is a long piece of thread. Um, and actually, if you're doing the straight stitch, you don't need this much thread. So what I'm going to show you, we only need about two-thirds of the thread. Um, so what we're going to do is the way I have it folded, it's in halves and halves and halves again. So unfold the thread, and since we are doing the, the uh, see if I can think and do two things at once, I don't think I can. Um, since we're doing the straight stitch as opposed to the cross stitch, uh, the, cross st the cross stitch does need all of the thread, which is why I included so much. Um, that way you have the option of choosing whether you want which stitch you want to do. Okay, 
So again, let's see if I can talk and move bread at the same time, because I don't think it's working so well. Okay, so here we have um, one end. We want to come down here. Okay, there we go. And there's our other end. So I've folded it in thirds. So you can see here, about one end and a loop. And then in this end, I've got one end and a loop. So what I'm gonna do, okay. So this loop end is going to be our two thirds. So you can see I've got the other loop end and our end of the thread. So we're gonna snip right there. And so that will give us two thirds and one third. So we're just going to set aside that sh that shorter one third because we don't need that. So we only need our two thirds piece. Okay, we do want that still in half though, so we'll leave it how it is. And we're going to go ahead and thread our needle. Once the thread is through the eye, then we're going to take the point of the needle and we are going to poke it through the thread once and then twice. Then we slide it down the needle, pull the thread, and we're locked on. Okay, so I was about right here for my half. So at this point, it doesn't need to be exact because we'll go back and check it in a minute. So first I'm going to fold my leather in half. I'm going to go from one of my middle holes to my other middle hole, right there. Okay. I'm going to pull our thread through. And as we do that, I'm going to take the end on my needle, the other end, and I'm going to pull, oops, not pull the thread out of my hand. I'm going to even that out. There we go. Okay. Now you do want it fairly even, uh, just because if you get it too uneven, you might end up with not enough thread to complete one side and more than enough thread to complete the other side. Okay, so the side that does not have the needle on, I'm going to bring over here. And I'm going to hold that in place with my finger um, or my thumb, depending on which side my needle is coming in. And it doesn't matter which side you start. Okay, and so 
this is my other end and this is the, the side that I came out. So now I'm going to go in and then out to the back and then in the back and out the front. The one thing to keep in mind is that you don't want to be crossing over like this. If you wanted to do that, then you should go look at the cross stitch, uh, cross stitch video. Um, this one, we will just be doing our straight stitch. Okay, and first we're just going in and out. We are leaving a gap every other space you can see, but we will go in and fill those in with our other piece of thread. Well, the other side of our thread. You can see I'm still hanging on to it, but at this point I've got several stitches in, so I don't need to hang on to this piece anymore. So I'm just going to have that out of the way there. So this one is quicker, I think, than the cross stitching. Um, I think it's just because there's a little bit less attention to detail needed for the cross stitch to look good. You got to make sure that your angles are angled properly on your stitches. But this one, you're just going in and out. So as you're doing this, make sure you're pulling snugly, but not so tight that the leather puckers together like that, but also not so loose that you have, that you can see a gap between your two pieces of leather. <clears throat> um, neither of them look good. And if it's too gappy um, between the, the pieces of leather, you might run out of thread and uh, anything that you put in the quiver or anything that you're making for that matter uh, might fall out. Um, so for a more secure finished product, you wanna make sure that you have nice snug stitches. So you can see I'm just going in and out, in and out, making sure that my needle and thread are always on the same side. And that I'm not crossing over from back to front or front to back. You can see I'm here, so I'm going here. So sometimes I might need to wiggle the tip around a little bit to find the hole. So if you ever see me doing wiggling like that, that's all I'm doing. Now there is a way of doing this with two needles where this end would also have a needle on it and you could actually do the stitching all at once. But that requires a stitching pony um, and a little bit of, uh, a lot more practice, I think, uh, in using two needles and both hands at the same time. And unfortunately, I cannot include a stitching pony in each of these kits because uh, it's just a little bit beyond the budget for, the, for this project, both yours and mine. Um, so instead, I'm showing you how to do this as a single needle project, which works just as well. If you are interested in learning about double needle stitching and how to do it. I actually do have projects in my Leatherwork 101 course um, where we do use the stitching pony and two needles to stitch our projects. Um, and the stitching pony as well as all the other materials and tools needed for each project, project um, are included in the course. Um, everything gets shipped straight to your door, and then there's online videos that walk you through each lesson and each project. And the only thing that you need to find that isn't included in the in the the course materials is a lighter, because I can't send those through the mail. I think I get in a lot of trouble for that. Um, but yeah, it's a good way to learn more about leather working, the different, some of the different techniques, um, try things out, but there's no hassle for you or your parents because you don't have to track down the right leathers, you don't have to track down the right tools, 
um, and you don't end up with a lot of leather left over after needing just a small piece for a project because most leathers come in really big pieces unless you're buying those random leather scrap bags from Joanne or Hobby Lobby or wherever you find craft uh, craft materials um, and those bags definitely you don't know what's what you're getting in there and they do tend to be smaller pieces so if you wanted to make something like this quiver uh, you probably wouldn't find a piece big enough in those types of bags but in any case yes put in a plug there for my course if you find that you're enjoying making this project this quiver and you want to learn more about leather working um, there will be a I think I put a link in the the show notes Ooh, I finally said that I don't think I've ever said that before in one of my videos <laughs> uh, but yes there will be a link in the show notes um, as well as a uh, I believe that there's a little bit more information at the end of the video that I tack on to all of my my videos um, about the course and then it gives you the, the website to go to. Okay, so I came out the top and I am actually now going to back stitch, which basically just means that I am going back down. Um, so I'm gonna go that way. I'm gonna go here. I'm going to do one more just because this is the front and this is the back. And I want to have my stitches end on the back which you'll see in a minute okay so i'm going to leave this tail for now and i'm just going to cut my thread off my needle Take the needle.
Okay, so I'm going to take the end of my thread and my needle. And just like I did before, I'm going to thread my needle. And then I'm going to take the tip of the needle and poke it through my thread. Okay, then slide that down the needle and down the thread. Lock on that thread. Okay, so I'm giving it a quick tug, make sure nothing's loosened up. And then we come out, we're on this side. So you can immediately see that there's a gap here. So here we are, we're just filling in the gaps. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that snug, but not too snug. And then because I'm on this side, I'm also gonna go in this side, and out this side. You can see I'm kind of wiggling that tip of the needle around, oh, there we go, trying to find the hole. Okay, pulling it snug. So just as before, we're just going back and forth. In and out. The hardest part of this is really just making sure that if your thread is on the side that that's where your needle's going in and that you're not crossing over um, and ending up with your thread there. Um, but as long as you are consistent with keeping track of where your needle needs to go in next, then you'll be able to finish this fairly quickly and have a nice, even, straight line with stitches. You catch up on a corner or something just undo that and make sure you pull snugly
Okay, so as you can see, I am getting closer to the end. You can see where I've backstitched with my per first piece of thread. Um, so I am just going to continue onward. You just so I'm holding on to this thread, um, the one I already used, uh, just because if uh, my needle catches in that thread, it might pull it out the other way, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, so you can see now my stitches are all the way across, but I want this top to be secure because that's where the most pressure is going to be as you're pulling stuff in and out. So I'm going to continue up to the front, the top I mean, the top of my stitch line. Okay, so now I'm up at the top. And I'm going to back stitch with this thread as well. And if you look, you can see that this stitch and this stitch have been back stitched because it looks thicker, but this one looks thinner. It hasn't had a double stitch there yet. So I'm going to go through that one. And as you're doing back stitching, you might run into uh, a little bit of trouble pulling the needle through just because there's more layers of threads there so you might need to wiggle it back and forth but you should be able to do it so i've got three back stitch stitches there and that should keep it nice and secure so i am going to snip my threads we don't need to tie this one because the back stitch is pretty secure by itself um, unlike with the what we did the, on the uh, cross stitching So I've got these little tails left. I'm going to take my lighter. I'm going to get my fingers out of the way as much as possible. I'm trying to hold this so you can see what I'm doing, but at the same time I'm holding it how I usually hold it. So usually I take my long lighter because then my fingers aren't too close to the flame. And you want to hold it about parallel to your leather because if you hold it like this, you're going to burn things. So I'm going to hold it. Oh yes, and make sure you have proper adult supervision, appropriate adult supervision. Uh, so you don't burn your house down, don't burn your project, don't burn yourself. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so I'm going to hold it about horizontally. And again, this is a little bit awkward right now because I'm trying to show you what I'm doing. But anyway, yes. Okay, so you're gonna melt those down. So. You can see I'm moving it a little bit because I don't want to hold it too closely for too long. And then I'm going to use the end of my lighter. Um, sometimes I use this part, the metal part, as I touch it. Um, but I don't feel like it smushes it down quite as well. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you see I use my finger. But I'm trying to really not show you guys that because you could get burned. <laughs> I don't want you doing that. I still see a little bit of uh, little threads from where I melted it. So I'm just going to melt it a little bit more. Um, oops, I blew it out. Uh, less is better than more, I think, when it comes to melting threads. Um, it's very easy to go from almost perfect to too much, and now you have threads that are completely melted through, and you have to figure out how to fix it and make it look good. So here you can see, maybe, there's two little... Uh, melted threads right there and that part is done.
Okay, so now we are ready to put our Conway buckle on. So this is different from like what you would use on your belt buckle or something like that. Um, these types of buckles are usually used for something that you don't adjust very often. So like on uh, bridles for horses, that type of thing. Um, but this would also work on this because you probably aren't, once you adjust it, you probably aren't going to need to adjust it again uh, very soon. Um, over time you might, especially if you're using it um, just before and after you hit a growth spurt or something. Um, so I like to, oh, just, I don't know if you actually saw what I was doing. So you put the, the hole um, in the short strap uh, over the prong. Um, and that is a bigger hole because the prong does get bigger down to the bottom. And then we put our other strap in, our longer one with multiple holes. And you figure out which one you, <clears throat> which hole you want. I like to just push it down just to make it secure um, and a, a snug fit. Um, and it is adjustable um, for whether you're shorter or taller. So we do have, this quiver does fit actual arrows. Um, these are some arrows I picked up at Walmart. Should go with my recurve bow from my 4-H days, many, many years ago. <laughs> Won't tell you how many. Um, so these don't have actual tips on them. They have duct tape on the ends because we've done different things with it. Um, so this quiver would work fine if you have practice tips. Um, but if you have hunting tips, or any others that are super sharp, I would not put them in this um, because they'll just tear up the leather and uh, you could get hurt and your project wouldn't last. So anyway, it does work with actual with actual arrows, but if you like to just play arrows and stuff like that, let's see if I can do this. Did I ever get this right the first time? There we go. And let's see if I can reach been a long time since I did any archery um, and there you go uh, you can also put air dowels and then stop talking you can also put dowels in here if you're just pretending or if you have um, a play bow and arrow that type of thing um, one last thing if you so if you have the uh, strap adjusted because you're taller then this tail isn't going to flap around too much. It's not going to bother you. But if you are on the shorter side and you have it adjusted like here, it's going to flap around a lot more, especially once you have it like that. So if that bothers you, if it doesn't, don't worry about it. <laughs> but if it does bother you, what you can do is you have some thread left on your needle. You're going to make a loop. So you go in, around the back side here, and then back up. And then we're going to take it back around so we can tie a knot on the back. And I'm actually going to shift the thread so that I have a shorter tail on this end and more next to the needle. So then, okay, so you want it snug-ish. You don't want it tight. Um, you want it super loose in here. Okay, so I'm tying a square knot, double knot, whatever you want to call it. 
So that's what it looks like on the front. And then on the back, we've got our square knot. I'm going to snip the threads close. Because it's wax thread, it, like I said, it does slip around a lot. So I'm just going to melt that knot a little bit. Just to, oops. And this is an example of too much. This is how easily it burns through. So I'm going to have to redo that really quick. Because it went from good to not good super fast. So let's try that again. You can see where I scorched the back a little bit too. Another indication that I did too much heat in one spot. So probably I should have cut those threads a little bit shorter. Okay, so I'm doing that again. Cutting it a little bit shorter. Okay, and then melt it a little bit. And then I'm using the bottom of the lighter to push down. Remember, have appropriate adult supervision. Okay, so that shouldn't come undone too easily.
Now, if you don't have thread sitting around because you used it for something else or you threw it away already, um, you can easily do this with a piece of yarn um, or string or something like that or other type of thread. Um, but that just keeps it from flapping around um, and getting in the way if that bothers you. If it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. Um, and of course, you can uh, still adjust. It'll take a little bit more finessing depending on how snugly you tied your, uh, your knot on this. But we can still adjust the length of our strap. So here I've moved it up several holes and it's still there. So that's just another little thing. If you want that, you have that available. So here we go. We have our completed straight stitched uh, quiver. Great job. I hope you have lots of fun with it and be sure to uh, send me bit, uh, pictures of you making it or even using it. I'd love to see how you use it. Um, or if you stitched it differently, I'd love to see that as well because I'm showing you one way, but there is lots of ways to do this. And you guys are creative and I'd love to see your creativity. Have a great day.